what would those slaves do? How would they survive? Who would take care of them? They had no right to be equally treated according to the society around. They would immediately be recaptured by the non-Muslims living around because as such they had no right to live freely. There were many possible dangers to the slaves themselves which must have ultimately resulted in this teaching from Allah that if you do not enslave people without your right to enslave them, this is right. But you must also begin to liberate slaves. And herein is the Quranic teaching, which is incomparable with any other teaching in the world. The ways and means suggested in the Quran and enforced many a time by which slaves could be liberated are so many that it is impossible for these means to be taken seriously and for, uh, for the society to implement them and yet slavery to survive within a few generations. It must come to an end. For very small uh, crimes, mistakes, follies, this and that, om omissions, the remedy suggested by the Quran is free a slave, liberate a slave. And then the Holy Quran says that the best people in the sight of Allah are those who liberate slaves. So this resulted in a mass movement among the Muslims for the liberation of slaves. And when there was no other means legally to turn the free people into slaves, then automatically it, slavery must have come to an end. Why it did not was because in many other cases, the Muslims in, of the following generation did not practice Islam. They ignored Islamic injunctions wherever it suited them. And this happens with every society. So the fault lies not with the Quranic teachings, but with those people who took the teaching lightly or misunderstood the teaching. Now, in this regard, I must also point out that the teachings regarding slaves also is, must be understood according to the Quranic injunctions and the ahadith, that is the traditions or instructions of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu himself and his practice. According to Islamic uh, uh, injunctions, the picture which emerges is that you, if you have a service slave, you must treat him with honor, with equality. You must feed him with the food which you, with, by, with which you feed your own family. You must dress them in a manner that you dress your own family members. You must not speak harsh words to them. If you strike them, you may earn the wrath of Allah. And the only remedy for this, if you have done it, being carried away by your sentiments or passion, I mean the anger, is to liberate the slave. Now this was done so repeatedly and consistently by Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu that there are many an example where a slave committed his mistake and somebody lost his temper and struck him. And once it happened, it happened many times, but it, one it so happened that Muhammad Sallallahu himself was coming in the direction of the pers person who was striking his slave. Not uh, viciously to the degree that he could have broken his legs or things, but he struck at him. And Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu shouted, he didn't shout normally, but raised his voice and said, Abu Masood, Abu Masood, oh, what is happening? He understood the tone of urgency and displeasure. And he turned and he paled at seeing his impression. He said, oh, Prophet of Allah, I liberate this slave immediately now. He said, had you not done this, you had earned hell. 
So the attitude towards slaves is also so important that the slavery does not become as heinous to look at if the slavery is practiced in the short term that it is practiced, should be practiced in Islam, on the, according to the instructions of the Holy Quran. And the love that uh, was generated because of this teaching between the slave and the master was so intense sometimes that given the opportunity of liberation, the slaves themselves would reject to, to, to benefit from that. It particularly happened in the case of Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah's own slave, Zaid. His uh, parents were some nobles from uh, um, perhaps Persia or some other country who had lost their son and they, were, they, didn't know, they didn't know much about him, where he had gone and disappeared. When the fame of Islam spread far and wide, they heard his the son, the name of his, their own son mentioned in relation to the Holy Prophet. So they ultimately approached him and said, you claim to be the Prophet of Allah, we have come here not to accept Islam, but to claim what belongs to us, our son. So he said, yes, he's yours for the taking, no problem. He called Zaid and said, here are your parents, and I with all my, 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 my I mean, with all my heart, I permit you, without any reservation, to go with them and return to your home and your own land. He looked up at him, said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, not after I have known you, it's impossible. Turned to his parents and said, I know your parents, I respect and love you, but I love him more. So it was the slavery of love which had got, which had been transformed from the slavery of a cruel form against which no human can really take an exception. So if you read the two teachings of the Holy Quran regarding slavery, then it does not appear to be such a heinous thing as normally it is related to. Now, things have changed, I know. There's still slavery practiced in Saudi Arabia and some other Muslim countries, most unfortunately, because they exploit the poverty of some poor nations. And they think, which we consider absolutely wrong, that if they go to India, to Madras, some other backward countries, of Ind parts of India, where even the parents of a poor child are compelled to sell that child for the sake of economic necessity. At least, if not for their own sake, for the sake of the child itself, because they know he would be better fed outside and better clad outside. So they sell and they buy them. But the interesting thing is that except for a few cases in Sheikhdom, most often in Saudi Arabia, the slaves are treated with such equality that those Ahmadis which have been there, which have been moving in and out of the uh, palaces of the uh, princes, they have bear, borne witness to me that we have seen the slaves to be clad like them, to be sitting on the same sofas, sharing the same style of life, so much that sometimes it was very difficult for us to find which was the master and which was the slave. Bad as it may be, but not as bad as slavery has been practiced elsewhere in the world. Particularly, as I mentioned the earlier, periods of slavery, forced enslavement of people of Africa and the torture they suffered. And despite the fact that there is no slavery in America, no legality for in slavery, yet the blacks are treated even worse than slaves. Somehow, very cleverly, you know, they're kept at a third or fourth rate level. And they're rotting in slums, and there's no hope for their rise to the equal level with the whites. So this is 
unwritten slavery. 